All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we are direct seeding about 10 to 15 cool loving crops directly right into my garden this March. Now that it's actually warm, I would argue today is probably the really the first day of the growing season. Uh, of course, things have been growing before that, like flower bulbs, the fruit trees are starting to bud out and starting to flower. But uh, in general, the soil now here at March 13th, uh, March 12th, excuse me, is actually, I think, the start of our growing season because the soil for the next couple of days is gonna really warm up with these nice, warm, sunny days that we're gonna have. So these are gonna provide that warmer soil that we need to actually germinate our crops. And the cool oven crops, the benefits of these is that you can plant them really early. You don't have to wait until your last frost. In fact, I would advise you don't wait till your last frost. There is a whole growing season in the spring that people usually miss out on. Uh, new growers, new gardeners always miss this part of the season and they typically miss the fall season as well. And most of you guys just start in the summer, but if you have some of these seeds lying around, now's the time to get your act together. And so some of the crops you can plant, we're gonna talk about and plant in today's video is arugula, kale, lettuces. In particular, I really like the uh, little gem lettuce. This one here is a nice little cracker or <laughs> way of getting dips into your mouth, <laughs> uh, like a nice tortilla chip that's healthy for you. Um, you can also have uh, broccoli rob or one in particular I'm growing is called Quarantina rob. We also have kohlrabi, tatsoi, and also bok choy. I find that um, those two are really underrated in the United States, uh, but you know, in Asian countries, ta tatsoi and bok choy are really popular and so easy to grow. You know, bok choy is really a nice broccoli replacement that's really quick and easy, super easy to grow. Tatsoi is a nice spinach replacement, same thing, really easy to grow these crops. We also have spinach that I'm gonna plant today, parsley, radishes, uh, all kinds of different herbs, dill, um, cilantro, we also have more different kales that I'm gonna to plant today. Uh, we have arugula I already talked about, and then all the different root crops. So things like radishes, you can plant carrots, you can direct seed, even beets if you, uh, you get some good germination out of them. So I think that uh, covers some of the crops that we're gonna plant. And I would argue that, you know, a lot of us really like to do transplants and we don't really, uh, maybe some of you guys are even afraid of direct seeding. I know it can be difficult, uh, for certain things that you might want to plant, or even if you don't have the right setup, it's actually very difficult. And for some of you, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you can get your soil in your garden, uh, the perfect consistency, the perfect texture, which really just revolves around adding compost every year. I have this garden here, which is about 17 feet deep. Uh, we actually just cut off a little bit here for these alpine strawberries, so it's not necessarily as deep now, but Certainly, if you were to um, have a, a smaller garden like this, you just add in a lot of compost. It's really easy that way. You can very easily get compost delivered to your house, just nice mushroom compost. It's affordable. You don't have to go and get bag stuff at the store. Or you can probably even uh, use your local compost that your township gives you for free. So all I do is come in here every year, add a couple inches of compost to the top. Over the years, like I said, I've been building this up quite a bit now. The, uh, the compost uh, height in here is about a couple inches above grade, what normally is actually in this plot. So this is just the best way to do it. I know um, Charles Dowding as an example, if you haven't followed him, recommend his channel. He's in uh, Great Britain. He's really the one that's been that big proponent of the no dig movement, which is just simply, again, adding compost. You don't have to till, you have less weeds, uh, you have, um, you know, very easy time direct seeding. A lot of crops grow in this so well and there's a lot of fertility because you just keep adding more and more compost. The water content also in the soil is basically perfect. So a day like this, we're getting about three days in a row of, you know, some temperatures close to the 60s or in the 60s uh, and it's sunny all day. So those three days are gonna warm up the soil, allow us to get the germination that we need um, and we're gonna be able to actually germinate um, different crops in the soil. And so I wouldn't be doing this though if I didn't have those temperatures and I wouldn't be doing this if I, it was really wet as well. Now in the spring, a lot of you guys may have really wet climates and that can really saturate the soil and that extra water 
that saturation, if the wa water really hasn't drained away from this compost, it can be really difficult germinating into it. So you gotta wait a little bit for the soil to dry out a bit, and you also need to wait for the temperatures. You also have to have the right texture, the right compost, and that's it. It's really that simple. Once you get all that set up, it just becomes a no-brainer task that everyone can do, and I would highly recommend it for these particular crops. And these crops that I'm, I am recommending that you guys direct seed, um, you know, these don't really have to be started from transplant. And that's the beauty of it. We all like to focus on the transplants. We all love to be in a greenhouse. I love it. But you don't have to do all of this from transplant. It's just unnecessary. So if you can, you know, avoid that and make it just a little bit more simple, you know, instead of using artificial lights, instead of building a greenhouse, uh, these really quick crops don't mind to be um, direct seeded. So that's the beauty of it. I find, like I said, there's just not enough education on this topic. So that's why I'm making today's video. So the first thing to do once we've got our soil prepared is we gotta get a hori hori. I mean, you can get a garden shovel, but this is really all you need. And I just make some trenches. I usually space the trenches out, um, I don't know, about four inches, depending on the crop, maybe six to eight inches. You want to grow a lot of food in a small space you can go a lot closer uh, you know four inches is probably the closest maybe three inches depending on it you know whatever it is that you're growing and you can always look at the seed packet if you're confused i got a lot of carrots in here i need to pull these up uh, from the last sowing that i did in the fall but this is all it is here guys we're going to take our seeds, let's start with uh, spinach, because this one, just the first one, by the way, it's visible. Um, you know, some of the seeds are so small, like carrots, you can't really see them. And then we're just gonna go down the line in this trench. It doesn't get easier than this, guys. We don't need to make the trench too deep. That's one thing I find people make the mistake of doing that. We don't need to bury these seeds so deep that, uh, you know, they can't germinate. And so that's the thing. Some of these seeds, depending on the size of them, typically the bigger the seed, spinach is a nice size, a nice size seed. You can bury this actually, um, I wouldn't say an inch, maybe a half an inch. They always recommend the width of the seed, double the width of the seed is how, how uh, deep you can bury it. So I would say, I guess, at most a half inch. I haven't tested it, but, you know, I would argue spinach is really easy to germinate because you can bury it a little bit deeper. But you don't need to make, and I always make all of my trenches, no matter what it is I'm growing, the same uh, depth. And it really isn't much. I mean, we're talking about probably a half inch trench. But then, you know, depending on what it is I'm growing, like if it's carrots and the seeds are so small, it all is is just when we come back in here and put the soil back over the seeds, you just do it very, very lightly. You know, these carrots and really, really small seeds that you can grow, they require some of that light, but they also need constant moisture. And that's a bit of a paradox in a way because the, if they're in contact if there's light hitting them they're going to dry out easier so <laughs> it's a bit tricky to germinate carrots that people frequently have problems but i just do this exact method and i get 100 percent. i'm telling you i get close to 100 percent germination or whatever it is 90 percent, just by doing this and that's really all it is um, same method just lightly cover the seeds with soil. I don't even touch them after that. I don't step on them. I don't do anything. And that right there is it, guys. So I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this video. Here's a little close-up of the size of the trench. I mean, it just is so... It really is not narrow at all. But then again, when you put the soil over top, even if you make it a little bit deeper, just lightly put that soil there back on top. Here's some uh, parsley from last year that's overwintered. We had a, quite a mild winter. I'll let this stay 
it'll seed and I'll just let it let it seed but um, yeah that's how easy this is here guys thanks for watching hit that subscribe button hit that like button we'll see you for the next video take care